everyone, it's me again, Brittany, and I'm here today with a really exciting video. This video is sponsored by The Kingdom, and it is to promote this amazing new book called The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. I'm really, really excited about this, guys. It sounds like an absolutely phenomenal story, and today I'm actually going to be kind of turning myself into a fantasist, but to do that, I think we need to look just a little bit different, so I'll be right back. So now that I'm dressed a little bit more like a princess would and I have some sort of tapestry in the background, let me try to explain to you what this book is about because honestly, the second that I heard the synopsis, I knew I wanted to be a part of this and a part of promoting it. It just sounds exactly like something I would love. The best way that I'm going to describe this is that it's Westworld meets Disney. This is set in the future in a theme park called The Kingdom with artificial intelligence, bioengineered animals that used to be extinct, and where you can go to escape your life and actually have your happily ever after. From riding dragons to meeting princesses, this kingdom has it all. As happy and wonderful and phenomenal as that may seem, there are so many dark elements in this story. So we do have our seven fantasists, which fantasists are sort of like princesses in this world, and they are these ideal, gorgeous, perfect women that go around in their ball gowns and try and make everyone as happy as possible all the time. And not everything is as it seems because all these bioengineered animals and these robot fantasists and everything that really controls the perk and makes the perk a happily ever after starts to malfunction. Their programming is going haywire and something is awry. But they don't start to notice right away. They just start to notice small things. And our main character, Anna, starts to notice that she is having feelings and they're not supposed to have feelings and so when she starts to develop love for one of the human workers in this kingdom everything goes wrong we follow this story as she is accused of murdering this man that she loved and as she has to go up on testimony and try and get through her memories and try and sort out what's real and what was fake and explain that she really did love him and she couldn't have possibly murdered him. This story is told in a very fascinating format. It's told through files and testimonies, partially in the past and partially in the present. This entire time, you really have to wonder if Anna did do it and killed the man that she thought she loved or if there is something else going on and if she's going to be brought to justice. This is just so fascinating to me guys. There are a lot of themes in this that are brought up that are very important to talk about that makes this story somewhat realistic and somewhat terrifying in that manner because our world could become this very very easily. So today I'm going to kind of discuss those kinds of things, the themes that are going on in this book. We're just gonna see where it takes us but we are gonna try and become a fantasist, this perfect perfect girl. I did start this book and so I do kind of have an idea of what they're supposed to look like but they don't really even describe the makeup process. They just kind of describe the upkeep necessary to be this perfect princess and to make everyone a happily ever after. And it starts by saying that as they awake, assistants arrive to accompany them to a decontamination process, an extensive process of scrubbing, shampooing, conditioning, exfoliating, plucking, shaving, and full body moisturizing. That happens every single day, and after that, they go over to health and hygiene, and then finally to the beauty specialists. And over the course of several hours, they turn us from seven blank slates into seven fantasy princesses. Fantasists, the closest thing to female perfection the world has ever seen. We are beautiful, we are kind, we are as colorful as the rainbow, created to celebrate our international unity and reflect the diverse world in which we live. We love to sing and smile and give. We never raise our voices, we always aim to please. We never say no unless you want us to. Your happiness is our happiness. Your wish is our command. We're gonna turn ourselves into that. I'm not gonna do anything crazy today. It's just gonna be a very simple get ready with me. In my opinion, the kind of perfection that they're trying to acquire in this is by being as naturally perfect as possible. I'm gonna try and kind of go for what's on this cover. So let's just show you that. So again, not very obvious makeup, just very, very pretty, and obviously the red lips. We'll see if we end up doing red, though. So first and foremost, let's get our hair back. So I'm gonna start with a primer so that my base is as smooth as possible, and this is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Primer. Okay, after that has sat for a second, let's just go in with a natural foundation because obviously fantasist princesses already have perfect skin. We're gonna wanna make it look as natural as possible and this is the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. I'm probably not gonna be walking you through what every single thing is. I don't know why I started doing that. I'm not a beauty guru. 
Also, can't put too much on. Can't make it look like I'm actually wearing makeup, right? <laughs> That's actually the funniest thing about makeup to me is when people say, like you look different or something with it on because that's sort of the point. If you're gonna look exactly the same with and without makeup, then why wear it? No one would just wear makeup all the time if they looked exactly the same with or without it. But that natural look, the so strived for one, that's what we're going for. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. So that's actually one of the themes that is discussed in this book and it's sort of like the commodification of beauty, trying to look like what the world wants you to look like and that is exactly what they do with these fantasist princesses. They make them look how the world expects a perfect princess to look. And even from that ex excerpt, you saw that there's just so much that goes into it. There's hours in a beauty room to make them go from blank slates to beautiful women. And there's even hours before that of showering where they're plucked and waxed and shaved and moisturized and exfoliated until their skin is as soft and supple as the world expects it to be. It's just very interesting to see that process because these women were already bioengineered, they were created, they were made to already be the standards of beauty that people want them to be, and yet they still have to go through that kind of process to become even better. That's kind of crazy to me. Right, so now that we have our base, we're gonna do a little bit of concealer because there's no way a fantasist would have dark circles, am I right, ladies? Well, they actually don't sleep that much, I kind of discern from the very beginning of the book. I haven't read that much of it yet, guys, so don't worry, I'm not really gonna spoil you on anything. I've only read the very beginning and I can already say that it's going to completely draw me in. It has a very fast, interesting writing style and mysteries always go by way too quickly in my opinion. That was one of the things that they mentioned is that they don't actually sleep. They have resting hours where they lay on their bed with their wrists bound on either side and they just lay there and kind of go through all their programming, go through the day and throw the things out and things like that in their mind, which is so interesting to me because even with all that, there's still gonna be a problem in the book, obviously, if they're not behaving the way they should. Um, next, let's kind of do the eyebrows. I feel like I need to get closer for this. I might have to not talk for this part, so BRB. So while I set kind of my under eye, I wanted to talk about just about the part of how they don't say no. I'm very intrigued to see how that's going to play out in the book because I have seen Westworld. I've seen just a little bit of it and some people's fantasies are gruesome. Some people's fantasies are killing people. Some people's fantasies are just being awful, terrible human beings. And I don't know if that's exactly what's gonna play out in this one, just because it is a Disney-esque theme park where everything is supposed to be happy and perfect and maybe more familial in nature. But I do remember seeing somewhere that when, I think this is sort of when Anna's, I don't know how to say her name, it's A-N-A, -A, so I'm saying like Anna, but it could be Anna. So when Anna's programming starts to go a little weird is that she doesn't understand why her sister fantasists don't remember the nights where the very important VIP guests come. And I'm kind of curious to see if this is gonna have some talks on sexual abuse, especially to these robot girls, because obviously it's still an issue. If the artificial intelligence is starting to have feelings and understand and evolve into something else, then whatever it is these VIP guests are doing could be very, very bad. I'm not sure though. I haven't actually read through that part or anything like that. I'm just curious to see if that's gonna be explored because it's definitely something that's explored in Westworld and it's very dark in Westworld. And this is supposed to be a pretty dark story in general. Like, even though it has that sort of Disney vibe, it's supposed to be pretty dark and telling of the world around us. I also know, oh, this is actually something I'm kind of really excited to see. So it is set in our future and it's set we're gonna bronze up to bring back some life to the face that we made a blank slate. Oh my gosh, we really are going through the steps of becoming a fantasist. <laughs> but I am just curious to see the talk on climate change because I know that there's discussions on like animals that we currently have that have gone extinct in this society. And obviously there's already the other extinct animals that we've never seen like mammoths and narwhals and things like that that roam the parks just for people's pleasure. And obviously the ones that we've never seen in our life at all, like dragons. I think that's gonna be super cool to see 
what that is. And Owen, the guy that she falls in love with, is supposed to be the caretaker for the animals in the park. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be some talks on like animal rights and the things that they maybe make their bioengineered animals do. Because there already are so many talks on that, on trying to stop just zoos and the things that zoos do and the way that they mistreat their their animals and I'm sure that's definitely going to be something that comes up in the kingdom. I mean these animals are supposed to do whatever these humans that are paying to see them want to see them do and I'm sure that there's going to be some sort of problem with it. I personally am a very big like animal rights person. I love animals. I wish that they were all treated with the fairness and respect that they deserve but it's not the world we live in. I'm gonna kind of stop there with my face and do a eye look. Now for the eyes, we're gonna want to bring back some dimension into our eyes because they're pretty blank right now, but you want the dimension to look very realistic so that if someone were to look at your eyes, they wouldn't even really notice you have eyeshadow on. They would just think that your eyes just do that. So <laughs> uh, I'm being very dramatic in this sense because I definitely see one of the main issues being the objectification of women in this story, specifically because we're following Anna in the fantasist, so we're going to be seeing them be objectified, seeing their only importance come from how happy they can make someone else and how pretty they can be. Oh, I wanted to show you this actually because it's actually on the page right after that excerpt that I read for you guys. And it shows the My Kingdom app, a little bit of it to see what it is these kingdom fantasists are rated upon so that they can be fixed to be better constantly. Obviously we have titles like beauty, kindness, conversation, sweetness, gown, helpfulness, charm, memory, smile, cuteness, face, attentiveness, body, affection, gentleness, obedience. None of this has anything to do with what they can bring to the table, but what they can bring to the table to make the guests happier. And I think it's just going to be very dark to see because I just don't see it being pure. I don't see all of the guests treating these fantasists with respect. I don't see that even being something that the kingdom expects out of their guests, especially not their VIP ones. So I just feel like that's going to be a very serious topic that's discussed. Let's kind of zoom you in. Now what is interesting to me about the kingdom itself is in that page right before they show you how they rate the fantasists, they have a commercial that's for the kingdom. It's showing little girls that are dressed up as the princesses and then a brave knight dramatically saying, fear not fair maidens, we'll save you. These two little girls just backflip and do gymnastics. The little boy is super shocked holding his toy sword and drops it. He goes, huh? And little girl number one says, come on guys, everybody knows princesses don't need saving. There's a voiceover that it says, calling all brave girls, your castle awaits. The kingdom, the future is fantasist. So obviously these fantasists are supposed to be a sort of feminist icon and trying to show women that they're worth more than being a damsel in distress. And that is why it's so weird to me that these princesses don't actually have any of that at the end of the day. They're very much objectified and used only for their looks and prettiness and what they can bring to the table. So it's a very big double message in my opinion and I'm curious to see, oh that is way too dark. I'm curious to see how the little girls that visit the kingdom feel after seeing fantasists. Because that's the message they're sending then to the little girls that, oh yes, these fantasist princesses are more than just damsels in distress, they're beautiful and they're iconic. And you should be beautiful and iconic as well. So even though the message is supposed to be more feminist, it actually ends up kind of doing the exact opposite. All right, and now just the lower lash line because it can't just look like your upper eyelid has dimension without the bottom because that would look unnatural. Okay, let's kind of zoom you out because it's kind of weird having you this close. <laughs> now that the kind of eye look is done, I did do shimmery sparkliness because, I don't know, I just feel like princesses are supposed to like pink and sparkly things and yeah, that's, that was really the only reasoning behind that. So yeah, another one of the topics that I did want to mention is climate change is also going to be a very big part of the story. This is all in like the first 20 pages, guys. I'm telling you, I only just started the book, but I'm already so, so enamored with the storytelling. And another one of the major things that will be discussed is climate change. And the reason I am saying that is because they've already discussed how the ocean used to be blue and filled with life. And in this, it seems that the water has turned dark, that it's completely polluted. Sea life is contaminated or dead. 
it's just very sad. I think that this story is going to discuss a lot of things that are very hard hitting at the moment because obviously climate change is huge. I think I read somewhere that the damage that we're doing to our world will be irreversible if we don't change our actions within the next few years. Well, not irreversible. I'm sure eventually the world will get back to where it was, but we probably won't be around for that if we continue the way we are. I'm really, really intrigued, and I love that it's all in this setting of a very Disneyland-esque park because I love Disneyland. I don't know if I've ever really talked about that on my channel. I've always been a huge Disney fan. I love the Disney princesses and I love Disneyland. I love being there and I love being happy and surrounded by all these things. It's gonna be very interesting to see the other side of the story because obviously going to Disneyland or Disney World, if you guys have ever been, it is about making us all happy. Like it's the happiest place on earth. That is what their slogan is. And I know this isn't supposed to be Disneyland. It's the kingdom. It's just similar. You never really think as the guest of everything that the workers and those in charge have to do to make the experience as unforgettable and magical as possible. This book is gonna kind of give you maybe an even darker look into what goes behind the scenes to make everyone so happy and to make this place the happiest place in the world. The slogan on the very front of this book says, where happily ever after isn't just a promise, but a rule. And it's gonna be so, so interesting to see it done in this sort of futuristic setting with these people that technically don't have human rights. Because when you think about it, robots with artificial intelligence wouldn't have human rights. That's why they're able to make them do and look and say everything that they want them to say. It's because they don't have rights of their own. They shouldn't even have thoughts of their own. And so when everything starts to malfunction and they do start having thoughts and feelings and emotions of their own that show just how messed up everything that they've been doing is, that's when things start going haywire. That's when our main character is accused of murder of the man that she loved. I mean, besides the murder, that is another one of the themes that is discussed in this book is what really makes a human a human. When you look at it, we're gonna be seeing the side of the story of the artificial intelligence and everything that they have to do and all the things that they feel and think to make everyone else happy, the things that they have to go through to make everyone else happy. How human is it of someone to force anyone into that kind of situation? It's gonna make humans monsters and it's gonna make these artificial intelligence robot beings very humanistic and they're gonna have very human traits and I'm just so intrigued to see where it goes. Let's do the lips. Should I do the red? Should I do red like our fantasist right here? All right, let's just do it. But I'm wearing pink. I feel like red doesn't go well with pink. All right, we're just gonna do it. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. Yeah, I really enjoyed turning myself into this fantasist. I mean, you can tell me how I did, but I mean, it's pretty different. I don't know, I didn't have a lot to go off of. All I knew is that it was probably gonna be a very like natural glowy look and then just having the lips as the focus. So yeah, I really had a lot of fun discussing the topics that are gonna be discussed in this book that I'm thinking are gonna be discussed in this book. I think that it's gonna be such a fantastic novel. I think it's already very fast paced. I think the mystery is gonna be so fascinating because obviously their intelligence, their minds are being messed with every single night. So her memory isn't perfect. There is a very likely possibility that maybe she did kill the man she loves or she's being framed. We have no idea. I'm so excited to see what's happening. I'm so excited to see how this book takes it and where it goes. I'm sure it's gonna be super fascinating. So yeah, please guys, if you wanna get your hands on it, it is officially out the day that I'm filming this video, which is May 28th. So it's in whatever store you prefer to buy your books from and I would check it out if you want to. I'm excited about it and that's why I agreed to do this video. So thank you so much again to The Kingdom for sponsoring and thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.